Ladies and gentlemen, in these uprooted times, there is a great need for constancy, uh, a need for those who can rise above the clamour, the din and the sheer pace of our lives to help us to rediscover those truths that are immutable and eternal, a need for those who can speak of that eternal wisdom which is called the perennial philosophy. Looking at the programme for this conference being organised by Sacred Web on the theme of tradition in the modern world uh, and the list of speakers, I know that um, you will be hearing just this kind of teaching from just these kinds of people. Within the overall theme, there would seem to be a marvellous diversity of matters being discussed, matters related to religion, the arts, the economy, the environment and, and much else. Although, very sadly, I cannot be with you, I, I do just want to say that I am always delighted to receive the latest issue of Sacred Web because so often I come across such deeply revealing and enlightening articles, uh, rich in content and diverse in subject matter. In addition, through the work of the Temenos Academy, of which I am patron, I have been fortunate to enjoy the writings of some of your colleagues, people such as Professor Syed Hossein Nazar, and of course the, the late Dr. Martin Lings, whose presence amongst us is so profoundly missed. The Temenos Academy has been and remains closely associated with many of those who have written and continue to write for Sacred Web and indeed for Sophia and other related journals. From the beginning, with the launch of the original Temenos Review, the Temenos Academy has not only been devoted to what its founders have referred to as the arts of the imagination, but has also been committed both to the perennial philosophy and to the notion that man is at root a spiritual creature with spiritual and intellectual needs which have to be nourished if we are to fulfil our potential. Both of these matters are at the heart of the teachings of Sacred Web. Temenos Academy and Sacred Web are also, of course, dedicated to an exploration of the role of tradition in the modern world. The, the subject of this conference and indeed uh, to a critique of the false premises of modernity, a critique set out in one of the seminal texts of the traditionalists, René Guénon's uh, The Reign of Quantity. Now many find this teaching difficult, not least uh, because it asks us to question our very mode of being and, and perhaps because it asks us to question an ideology in the form of modernism that has become so set in our minds that any other way of being, of being seems in some sense fanciful and unrealistic. However, the, the teachings of the traditionalists should not, in any sense, be taken to mean that they seek, as it were, to repeat the past or indeed simply to draw a distinction between the present and the past. Theirs is not a nostalgia for the past, but a yearning for the sacred. And if they defend the past, it is because in the pre-modern world, all civilizations were marked by the presence of the sacred. As I understand it, uh, in referring to tradition, they refer to a metaphysical reality and to underlying principles that are timeless, as true now as they have ever been and will be. And by way of contrast, in referring to modernism, they refer to a particular, though false, uh, definition of reality, uh, a particular, though false, manner of seeing and engaging with the world that likewise is distinguished not by time, but by its ideology. In, a, in an article written in 1983 for the traditionalist journal Studies in Comparative Religion, Professor Nazar put it this way, when we use the term modern, we mean neither contemporary nor up to date. Rather, for us, modern means that which is cut off from the transcendent, from the immutable principles which 
in reality govern all things and which are made known to man through revelation in its most universal sense. Modernism is thus contrasted with tradition. The latter implies all that which is of divine origin along with its manifestations and deployments on the human plane, while the former by contrast implies all that is merely human and now ever more increasingly subhuman and all that is divorced and cut off from the divine source. Most especially, therefore, we, we can see that it is the very timeless quality of these immutable principles of tradition that makes its teaching so timely. For me, the, the teachings of tradition suggest the presence of a reality that can bring about a reality of integration. And it is this reality that can be contrasted with so much of modernism's obsession with disintegration, disconnection and deconstruction, that which is sometimes termed the malaise of modernity. Cut off at the root from the transcendent, modernism has become deracinated and has separated itself, and thereby everything that comes with it, its thrall, from that which integrates, that which uh, enables us to turn towards and reconnect with the divine. In this way, the, the loss of tradition cuts to the very core of our being, since it conditions that which we can know and be. For modernism, by its unrelenting emphasis on the quantitative uh, view of reality, limits and distorts the true nature of the real and our perception of it. Whilst it has enabled us to know much that has been of, of huge material benefit, it also prevents us from knowing that which I would like to refer to as the knowledge of the heart, that which enables us to be fully human. This dilemma is captured in ancient notions of balance and harmony, notions that are, for example, expressed in many guises in that wonderful Kabbalistic diagram of the Tree of Life. Uh, as the Temenos fellow Warren Kenton so beautifully explains in his lectures to the students of the Academy, the teaching of the Tree of Life is that the active and the passive aspects of life, which on their own may lead to imbalance and disharmony, must be, can only be, brought together in harmony by the influx into our lives of the divine and the sacred. Whether or not we interpret this image as an explanation of an outer or inner orientation, it is in this way, and only in this way, that the forces or characteristics of expansion and constraint can be brought into, in, into balance.